jump out and jump back in. Hey, oh. wait a minute, my friends. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on. Ah, that music is not over here. I'm going to request to join. I'm going to invite you. Is unable to join. What's going on? Hey, click request to join. Accept. Here we go. Accept. Accept. Oh. Now there's the question. On Insta, can anybody hear me? Because I'm using yep, this new mic and I don't know if this actually mic works. So someone, if you're on Insta and you can hear me, let me know. I can hear Otherwise, you. Otherwise, hi, Facebook. You can hear me on Instagram? Can you hear me on Instagram? Let me know if you can hear me on Instagram and how I sound because I'm playing with this new uh, mic. Yes, you can. How do I sound? Sounds, do I good. Sound, sounds good? good. I think it sounds okay. Okay. I'm just, like I said, I'm using a new... I'm using this Smart Mic Plus. Smart Mic Plus. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. This is Jeremiah. It's J-Man Monero with J-Man Speaks. Coming to you live here with the Indubitably Podcast. And this is... Jeffrey Scott Stanton. Are yes. you waiting for something else? No, I that's all. Red. I look very orangish today. It's okay. It's all good. We're inclusive. We normally, uh, me and Jamin normally play with our filters and lighting and stuff. I think I'm more, I'm more of your color-ish right now. Well, it's oh, funny because uh, Jeffrey, for some strange reason, he just turns his camera off before we go. He's like, makes it like puts his little privacy cover on there and then, he, yes. and then he wants to know why yeah and then he wants to know why he's orange or whatever he doesn't like the coloring but it's okay are, it's are right. you glad i didn't say banana oh that's one of my was my one of my son's favorite jokes when we were when he was little he used to crush that joke so what are you shaking up over there oh uh, wouldn't you like to is know? it a martini no is it a I martini drink on the job it's, it's spark Brought to you by Advocare, also known as Crystal Speaking Meth. Speaking of, if we can get a sponsor, <laughs> anybody who wants to sponsor this, I would love it. Uh, or a nice private coffee shop would be nice. No, because we're global here. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, <coughs> everybody, if you're, wa if you're watching, tell us where you're watching from. I'm always curious where people are actually watching from. Um, just because I know some people are watching, you just don't know from where. Well, and the other big part of, and you and I both always talk about this, it's like, if you're going to watch something, why not make it a networking opportunity and say, hey, I'm from here, I'm from there, I'm from there, and then now you got Absolutely. people all over the United States that you're connected with just because you tuned in. Why is... So I got to fix my jacket. It's all messed up. <laughs> Jeez. Sorry about that. My jacket was all messed up. And I'm trying to get the same distance instead of um, so I'm sitting a little further back than I would normally sit. Because if I move this way, that's where I normally sit. Hold on, hold on. I'll just make myself bigger. There we go. Anywho, so um, Jamin, you just got you were just on vacation or workation. Uh, you know, it's funny because people always say, "Oh." It must be nice to take a vacation, but in real estate, a vacation, we don't have paid vacations, right? We, we don't have a salary and like a pension plan. Uh, and, and there's no paid vacation. It actually costs us double because the time you take off, plus you got to kind of have somebody take care of your business. So we, uh, yeah, we had four buyers that we wrote offers for. We listed two properties <laughs> all from... Sunny Florida, St. Pete Beach. Very cool. Let me uh, let me shut off my uh, cell phone so it doesn't keep on going. So it doesn't make noises. See more so real how estate. You, how, so how? <clears throat> so how were you able to do that, or did you work the entire time, and that's how you were able to do that? No. Well, f first things first. Our papa. I <laughs> 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 No, I was gonna say. Uh, before we leave, we have a, a plan in place because there's two types of vacations you can take in real estate. You could take the one where, like, I've, I do take the ones every once in a while where I take my phone and I put it in the safe 
in the room. That's it. You cannot reach me. If my house was on fire, I wouldn't know until I come back to civilization. And then there's the other word before we leave. Okay, okay, I have somebody covering my business. Uh, but here's the buyers that we have that we're currently working with. We don't have anything scheduled to, to be seen, but something's going to come up tomorrow or the next day. Could you help us out? It doesn't have to be like a formal team member, but this happens to be uh, our, our licensed buyers. It used to be our, our operations manager. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my uh, vacation. <laughs> it used to be our operations manager, but now she's licensed. And so she just call her a licensed team member. I don't like to give her many labels because she can list, she can sell. Uh, but but she helped us out. So when buyers had to see properties, she showed them. And then when they had questions about value, about terms, conditions, and writing the offers, I hopped on a FaceTime, and then she handled the writing of the, of the you know electronically. So how do you set that up? Why well, not? How do you set up with a person? Because that could be whatever arrangement. If it's a team member, <clears throat> someone in your office who's covering for you, that you're working some sort of split or some sort of payment. That not even what I'm asking about. But what do you do about the buyer who like? Do you s set the expectation with those buyers, let them know you're not going to be around, or do you just dip out of town and hope they don't find out? And so you post on Facebook that you're in Florida. Yeah, like. I strongly believe in like just, <laughs> this is a good point because some people, they dip and they don't say anything and then they're like, yo, I follow you on Instagram. I saw your story. <laughs> You're on the beach. So I, yeah. I'm like, yo, let's just keep everything on the table. Like this is a this is a vacation that we planned in a time that's usually slow. January, mm -hmm. it, right? That Like two weeks in January, especially in Rochester, New York, when we got two feet of snow, historically is not a thriving real estate market. However, this year and the year prior don't apply to any kind of rules <laughs> when history uh, comes into play. But <clears throat> let them know up front. Say, hey, we're going to be out of town. I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm available by, by phone, by text, by video if necessary. This is the person that's going to be covering for us. They're really great, just like we are. Uh, however, when you have questions about the property, the value, the terms, the conditions, what we should write, anything. I'm available and we can hop on a call. So, so what set about, the expectations up front. Which is what you absolutely should do because I think people are always better once you set the expectations of how they're going to be met. Um, that's one of the things I always believe is is the relation, the reason why re all relationships, doesn't matter if it's agent, seller, agent, buyer, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, business relationship is the sharing and meeting of expectations. So as long as you set those expectations in advance, and the other person's okay with it, they're really not going to get upset with you. And he just walked off. So now, J-Man, what do you do um, for those sellers? Do you do it the same way? Yes. But, yes, okay. <clears throat> do you just call up the seller and say, hey, I'm going to go away for a week. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, choking. <coughs> I'm going to go away for a week. If you need help, call. Well, it yeah, it, it all depends, right? If, if somebody's in contract... Uh, we had one that we listed just a, f a few days prior to we left on a, on a Monday. We listed this property on a Friday. We had an offer by Sunday, and I was still able to keep him communication, make sure we had attorney approvals and all that. But we also have a virtual assistant that kind of handles once it hits pending. They have a whole drip campaign that keeps the, the, the seller in the loop. But mm -hmm. I just let them know, hey, you got any questions? I'm in Florida, but I'm still available. Here's where we are in our transaction. Here's our next steps of what you need to be looking out for. But really, right now, it's kind of hurry up and wait. We have our attorney approvals. The next step will be the appraisal. That's going to be handled through showing time. And then from there is the commitment, but that's not due for another 30 days. So in essence, what he's saying is you put some systems in place. You let the seller know exactly what's going on. At that point, the seller is comfortable with you not being 10 minutes away, you know, driving time. For about a week now see it's and this i'll just let everybody know when i did real estate in california i lived in new york and i had actually had a team in california and people's always people always ask me like how did you do the amount of business you did in california when you weren't there for more than say two weeks at a time and i'd be there for two weeks back in new york for three or four weeks there for three weeks and back and forth and i said well i would set the expectations with my sellers and buyers up front like the reason why I have um, a buyer's agent to work with you is that this is what we're going to do. 
They're going to handle the legwork. They're going to handle this. They're going to handle that. But I'm always available. When you want to place an offer, I'm going to jump back in and I'm going to do negotiation stuff on your behalf. And to the point that my voicemail used to say, my whole thing, say, hey, I'm returning phone calls today between the hours of you know, 12 and 1 and again between the hours of 5 and 6. Then I would have people call me up because they knew that I was going back and forth. Hey, Jeff, if it's, you know, call me back uh, between 12 and 1. Um, if that's California time, yes, call me back. Otherwise, you can call me back between 5 and 6 New York time. And as long as you set that expectations, set the expectations of what they can expect, most people are good with it. And if you have the system in place that you're able to go away or you're able to me operate a team and, and do a good amount of business with my team, you don't even need to be there. You need to oversee it. But I mean, you know, I kind of say this, something like this, like this, and, and it's funny, our, our CEO, Scott Durkin said this, and we were at some Tom Ferry event in New York City. Um, and he had said, and I'll never forget this line, you can't manage the office and cut the bagels at the same time. And I'm like, you know what? That's you, You're right. You can't. You can't, you, like, if you're the CEO, and I believe you're all the CEOs, especially when you're operating, if you're operating a team or you want to operate a team, you need to operate like a CEO. A CEO doesn't cut the bagels for the office meeting. Right. They, they, they don't do that. They run it when they need to step in, they do, you know, and that that's how they run their business. And, and you know, ultimately, when J-Man was able to go away for a week or a, year, a week or 10 days, how long were you gone for? 10 days. It's good. To, good he was able to time. go away for ten days because he runs his business like a CEO. He steps in where he needs to step in, where he knows his time is going to be the best spent, which is going to be the contract offers and going through that with his clients and his customers. Then it's going to be slicing the bagels and taking a buyer around to see thirty different properties. Well, and and I think they almost appreciate you. Uh, and I think this is where some agents might be like, I can't do that. The you know uh, I got to earn my commission by saying here's the kitchen right opening all the doors and doing like your if physical that's presence how you earn your commission and, by saying here's the here's the well, kitchen a, you yeah. got a wrong value of yourself well and that's what i'm saying like your physical presence and and the 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 performance of act you know action based performances is that the, i'm saying it right you doing things right your physical presence and you doing things doesn't necessarily add value to the transaction when when your client looks at you and, say, and you can say, hey, um, you know, Joe's going to show you the houses when you're ready, I step in. Then they, they're they like, wow, this, you're you're only coming in with those 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 high end decisions that need to be made, which is your expertise of what the what the property is valued. How should we structure the offer? What are the terms? What are the conditions? All those things. And they're like, here he comes. He's coming in. Boom. You can. You're appreciated. That He's much coming more. in as the closer. <clears throat> like you're coming in as the closer. You're coming in as the person who's going to get the deal done. And I think like what I would do is when I was going away, and this is even like when I didn't run, a, and again, my team wasn't big. It was myself. I had a listing agent, a buyer's agent, and a transaction coordinator. <clears throat> so what I would do, even if I was the initial content contact, and this was people who were like referrals and introductions that like this was my best client's cousin. Now you think, oh, well, you didn't take around your best client's cousin. Listen, there were some of them that I did for the relationship, but there's other ones that I would say, hey, you know what? Let me introduce you to J-Man because he's going to be the one that's showing your properties. Let's right. schedule a phone call. Let me bring him over on Tuesday. And well, if I and then you the would, introduction, you would, you, would, you would edify that person, right, and say this is a great agent. I've worked, yeah. Absolutely. You know, and I would say because his skill or her – it was her skill. Her skill literally is going to the property and pointing out things to you that every other agent's not even going to notice. That's what makes her a good buyer's agent to show you those properties. And so, okay, it makes sense. He's bringing in, so it wasn't like I'm pointing you off to, you know, someone that's just on my team. It was, I'm giving you the expert in this part of the process or this part of real estate. And you can do the same way if you're going away or running a team. Well, and to be honest, I really started perfecting this a little bit better when I started speaking because it was... I'm on the road quite often. People are like, how can you do it? You're on the road and people aren't, you aren't there. Do you lose business? And in the beginning, I did because I had to figure it out. What was the best way to kind of handle it? But then also 
agents in my market, the only only bullet they had in their gun was that, oh, he's not selling real estate. He's on the road speaking. And so then I would change my well, value <clears throat> proposition to to account for that. And then they didn't they weren't they didn't have anything after that. So I had my my biggest competitor in, in my market when I was in there used to use that against me. Oh, you know, he's a part-time guy. He's a New Yorker. He's only here for two or three weeks, you know, at a time. And then you won't see him for a month because, you know, he's on the road training. And people say, you know, I spoke to Bob and, you know, he says, you don't, not a full-time agent. I said, no, I'm a full-time agent. But he says, you know, you travel around the country doing speaking and stuff like that. I said, yeah, because I train real estate agents how to be real estate agents. So right. do you want to learn from me who's taught people or, like Bob or, or somebody who I may have taught? To ex do what exactly. Exactly. And yeah, so again, that's really exactly so it just say. it's the value proposition that I think you can use pretty much anything in there. But I think what you said that's important is that when you first started doing this, when you first started it, you actually think you lost it. You lost business until you figured it out. And I think it comes down to <clears throat> with everybody's having these systems in place. Right. Adjust and adjusting it, place. right? Adjusting your systems for because if I'm on a stage or in a classroom or something for three hours, you're not gonna get me. Right, mm -hmm. You're, you, I cannot address any issues until I get off and and check my messages and do whatever. So then I have but, somebody in place that can handle it. Who's but checking the my thing. emails there's, and voicemails and everything. There's a lot of agents who literally are at their kids' soccer game or cheerleading or yeah, baseball same. game, whatever it happens to be, and the phone rings and they jump up and answer the phone and run away from their game. And then the kid's like, where's mommy and daddy? It's the same thing. It's setting the expectations 100%. yeah, and it's also having a system in place. So one of the things I used to use is I used to use like real-time voicemail. I would change my voicemail because if I was with a client at a listing consultation, a listing presentation, if the phone rang, I wouldn't answer it. If I was at a showing and the phone rang, I wouldn't answer it. If I was at an inspection and the phone rang, I wouldn't answer it. So I would say, hey, you reached Jeffrey Stanton, ABC one to Douglas Elliman Real Estate. Today is you know Thursday, whatever it happens to be. Between the hours of five and six, I'll actually be at a showing for my clients. And, I, and I'd actually would leave that. So I'll return the phone calls at between six and seven tonight. Or, hey, you know, it's Jeff Stan, it's Tuesday, whatever. I'm at, you know, a, a pre walkthrough inspection for one of my clients. Or, hey, it's Jeff Stan, and this is one I always love because it's actually a plant to seed. Hey, it's Jeff Stan, uh, today's the day. It's, you know, between the hours of 12 and one, today's I'll actually be at a day. listing consultation on the Upper West Side. It's a beautiful three bedroom, two and a half bath overlooking the park. If you know anybody looking in the area, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll be calling I'll be calling everybody back between the... And so I actually used to plant those seeds. And then, because this is the thing, if somebody calls you, let's just, Jamie, if someone calls you, how quickly do you think they expect a return phone call? It depends on the generation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or return text, one of the two. Yeah. Generally, generally, and the statistics shows, within six minutes. How many of you can call people back within six minutes? Can't. So you might say, oh, 15 minutes, oh, an hour. This is the thing. If you called me and I wasn't able to answer the phone, was I on, if I was on vacation or if I was with a client, you knew when I was going to call you back. So you're okay because I'm setting the expectation of if you leave me a message now, I'm calling you back between this time and that time. If I could call them back sooner, I would. But at least this way, someone's not thinking, hey, where's Jeff? Where's Jeff? Where's Jeff? Well, and, So you can and, do the same. And, go ahead. I'll, so you can do the same thing when you're at you know, your kid's baseball game. Hey, it's Jeff Stanton. I'll be unavailable between 12 and 3. I'll be returning phone calls you know, between 3 and 5. Please leave a detailed message. On vacation, when I used to go on vacation, and again, I ran my team, ran my business, I would leave I would leave two hours a day that I would return phone calls. So out of the entire vacation, I would leave two hours a day that I would return phone calls. And I was between the hours of 12 and 1 on my voicemail, and again, between the hours of 5 and 6. So I'm like, you know what? I still need to operate my business. And it's okay spending two hours, but that was it. Those two hours, and that was it, if I had to. 90% right. of the times, either my buyer's agent or my listing agent would take care of it. But well, you set the expectations that people are okay with it. And I think the uh, the adjustment that some people need to make, and again, this is going to be a generational difference, is that you may get a phone call, 
they listen to your voicemail and they're not going to leave a message because the phone call was the message. Okay. Meaning oh, I called you. Call. Right. The missed phone call. can't see. And it drives you nuts. Cause it, cause it, your generation, <sighs> sir, uh, like my nephew, I'm like, why don't you leave a message? What for? For me to say, to call me back, you should know to call me back because I called you and you didn't answer. But this is the thing. What if my phone was off? Look at, look at you. <laughs> like, what if it went straight to my voice? Oh, man. Because this is I'm, a huge... I'm just a messenger, bro. That's it. <laughs> so, Peter Hernandez, which is our, our president of our Western region, and if you don't know who Peter Hernandez is, Google him. He's a legend in the industry, been in the industry 40 years, ran Cordwell Banker and a whole bunch of other companies on, on the West Coast, and has been with us uh, since we acquired his company. And he said the other day, if you call me and don't leave a message, don't expect me to call you back. You could have pocket dialed me. When this is the thing, maybe I don't have your number in my phone. So, and, and I agree with Just that. Or maybe my, maybe, but why? Maybe it was a telemarketer. I don't call back people. Like, when you call it message. back, it'll say, you cannot reach this number. Leave them, please, please, everybody. Leave, listen, Jeffrey, clients I'm are gonna telling do what you clients now, do. I'm never, if I, I don't even think I've called your phone ever. I want to say maybe, maybe once or twice. Maybe a couple times. Yeah. yeah. It's normally like either Facebook yeah, video Facebook or something or like Facebook that. Facebook video or something like that. And you're like, whoa, why are you calling me on video? And you won't even turn your uh, turn turn your thing on. But it's, for me, it's but weird to this... call people these days. But if I, if I call you, I'm not leaving a message. I'm not going to do it. But how do I know what you want? I want to talk See, to you. I, I also, and this is part, <laughs> so part of my voicemail uses. I wanted like, to talk please. to you. Maybe I just wanted so to part say of my, hi. Part of my voicemail used to say, please leave a very detailed message after the tone so I can better prepare myself for returning your call. So now I've actually made the reason to leave a detailed message in the other the person who's calling me benefit. Okay, if I leave Jeff a detailed message, he can prepare himself for returning my phone call. So if you make it about something about the other person, they're more inclined to do it. You know, all the time. I called you yesterday. You never called me back. No, you didn't. Oh, yeah, you didn't answer. It went to your voicemail. Did you leave me a voicemail? No. How am I supposed to know to call you back? Well, you got a missed phone call. Do you realize I deal with over the course of a month, 7,000 plus agents. Out of those 7,000, there's probably 1,000 that call me on a, literally have my cell phone number, call me on a monthly basis. If you don't leave me a message, I don't know who you are. I don't. And then you also get the other people, as we're talking about this, the other people, I had someone yesterday who was calling me from my cell phone to the office, to my cell phone to the office. And my office right now is forwarded to my cell phone, <clears throat> but it rings through as my extension. So I, so I'm picking ah, up the phone. Yeah. I'm picking up the phone. And as soon as I answer, they hang up. And then my cell phone rings. And as soon as I answer, they hang up. And then my office phone rings again. And as soon as I answer, they hang up. And I'm like, and actually this is the other evening. And I was at my mother's house. like, <clears throat> six o'clock. I'm like, that's somebody who wants to leave me a message, but doesn't want to talk to me. And I was like, how do you know? I said, cause they keep on calling from one to the other, hoping eventually I'm not going to answer. So the next one, I just forwarded straight to voicemail. And this and is the message, message the person left. Hey, Jeff, been calling you for hours. Yes. I've been answering. You just were hanging up. And cause they did not want to talk to me. They just wanted to leave a message. Well, did you so, tell them about slide dial at least? Yeah, uh, I did. Like, yo, no, bro, I actually didn't if you want to leave me a message, just use slide dial, bro. But I don't but mind. But this is the thing. Of course, the reason why you just want to leave me a message is because you didn't have the guts to tell me what you were about to tell me. Ay, Dios mío. <clears throat> so what else are we talking about, J-Man? Well, I, I think it's important. Um, Link. Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> I had to translate that, Lisa Betts. Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, I think the other important part is like if you want to really take vacations or vacation time or time away or be away, that's got to be part of your business plan as well, right? I, I work 48, yeah. 48 weeks a year because I take four weeks off. It, it has to be. I mean, to me, like, and then we talk about vacation. I'm going to talk about off time in general. To yeah. me, the most important time for you to put in your schedule first is the time away from work. Like 
it's the time where, again, you go into your kid's soccer game. You go into, you know, parent-teacher night, date night with your wife, Gone husband, fishing. or significant other. Gone, Gone fishing. Like, whatever it happens to be, like, that's the most important time because I think... I'm a good fisherman. The, I think they're... I discovered. Are you? I caught, caught a few. All right. But... <laughs> this totally threw me off. But what's going on there is, <laughs> like, when's the you time? Is it, hey, I can operate my business and take four weeks off a year? Is it I can operate my business and literally take off 12 weeks a year? Or is it is the first step, hey, I want to operate my business and Sunday mornings I'm coaching my kids' soccer game or coaching my kids' whatever. And that Sunday morning is going to be not available. But how do you do that, first of all, unless you set up the expectations and put the systems in place that you're not going to be available on Sunday mornings? You know, I had a real estate agent that I used to coach way back when that would take way a Sundays off. When. And this was the back in the days that you didn't even use a laptop to do your presentation. Like you had one of those binders. Flipbook. Flipbook, man. Yeah. I had a flipbook. You had the, you had, you had the flipbook. I had a fancy binder so, that you could go like this and make it a triangle so you could go. Yep. Whoosh, Absolutely. Whoosh. So, yeah. all right. So perfect. So what, what they, what we she used to want to take off. It was like Wednesday evenings and Sunday mornings. And she had five children and was a single mom. So she used as part of our presentation is she used to say, Hey, listen, I'm not available Sunday morning between, you know, until after one and on, on Wednesdays between this time and this time. And the reason being is in the back of her flip book, she had pictures of her kids and would turn it around. It's because these are the two days I promised my kids. I will always be there Wednesday night at this time and Sunday to be at their games. No one ever had a problem with it because they understood. Like, no, I said, well, I'm not going to listen to you because, you know, you can't be there. Oh, like, you're a, a family person. You care about your kids. Oh, okay. I mean, uh, you might be a dink and we don't have to work together. Yeah, and there's the thing. Is that, would you want to do Dual business income, with no someone kids, who... Guys. Dual income, no kids. Would you want to do business with someone who didn't even respect your personal time right so you know we have an eight we have an agent in california i'm not gonna say his name um but he goes his his decompression he I, it's uh he was bike riding for a couple hours on like wednesdays whatever it is yep, so when running. he tells his clients he's not available on wednesdays at three o'clock they'll say why and he goes i have therapy where is he is to in him, california yeah to him, California his bike riding, in Arizona. Nope, just California. Oh, uh, there's a guy I knew I met from DE. It was California, and but he did running and biking, like ultra. But okay. Yeah. Well, his therapy. Thing is, it's definitely he's therapy. like, I'm not lying. He goes, because it is my therapy. He goes, but no, if I tell them, I agree. oh, I'm not available on Wednesdays, you know, because I'm going biking for three hours, someone might say something about that. But I tell them it's my therapy. No one's ever going to say, no, 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 do my showing, don't go to therapy. And they're probably less likely to cancel a listening view with you if they know you're in therapy because they don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know what? Let's, let's address the – because I think some people might need help with this. We don't have to give them specific numbers, but how to have the conversation. You don't have a team, but you have people in the office that you're, you're colleagues, right? They're not mm -hmm. formal team members, but it's like, Jeffrey, you and I are in the same office. I'm going out of town. Can you cover me? How, how do we, how do we do that? I think you can do it from <clears throat> paper showing like, Hey, I'll give you X amount. You know, this, what, this, what happens. And I think you could actually potentially do a split with them. Like, Hey, if this person buys this house within that period of time, <clears throat> there's a lot of ways to do it. You know, before I had a team, I actually had someone in my office that I was really good friends with that we would cover for each other. And that was just part of the thing is like, yeah, right. I got you. you cover I got me next you. Time. When you go out of town, I'll cover you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, so, I, I, mean, I, I think it's, a whole it's, bunch of different ways. it's important to sit down and, and really it's like you're a business person. So it's like you got to set all the expectations to say, here's the different scenarios. I have these buyers that I'm working with. If you show them a house and write it, write the offer, I then handle it through to closing it's X amount. Maybe it's a referral fee, mm -hmm. right? Or I give you the buyer from the beginning. You work them through all the way to closing. It was a buyer that was my buyer. Maybe it's a, a seller that I'm working with that's going to buy something. Maybe that's 
50-50 after your split or whatever that is, 50-50 mm-hmm. basis. And then, um, like you said, it or it could be just an hourly or uh, a, a paper, paper showing m- might be tough if you're like, this buyer is going to look at 50 houses. Well, yeah, I'd want to set up, like if I yeah. knew I had the appointment set up, they were going to see three on a Sunday and I wasn't available because I don't get home till Monday. I said, hey, I'll pay you X per one of the houses, you know, if they have any yeah. questions, answer it. But if they're interested, they're going to call me. So I'll just pay you X. Yeah. And so I think it's like lay, lay down all those scenarios. And then here's here's the 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 fee And schedule. have it in writing. Yeah, in have writing. Have it in writing. As yeah. they say, good contracts make for good friendships. Right. Because I don't want to. Well, you know, Jeffrey, I showed them 10 houses. And then they wrote mm-hmm. the offer because of me. I'm the closer. Because I helped them narrow like, out yeah. those 10 houses. Because the reason why they placed an offer on that house that I didn't show them is because I took them to 10 houses to narrow down their choice. And they knew what they, they didn't want those 10 houses. And that's the reason why they... No, stop. This is the reason why we have it already. Hey, Donna. How are you? Oh, I do 50 50 Donna. Days to oh, <laughs> Donna. I always remember the bomba. In, I had Donna's a in Monrovia, if I remember correctly. Donna was her name. Uh, welcome, Donna. Yeah, uh, just working out the split. I think 50 50 is fair. It's like, I will, for me, sometimes it's worth anything. Your time is your most valuable asset. I don't think about, oh, I lost 50% of that. I think I had all this time with my kids. I caught some really small fish in the intercoastal. <laughs> and those are, those are memories that we've made for a lifetime. Uh, I don't care. It's, it's, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's worth half it. a loaf of bread is better than no bread at all. Better than croutons. Abs- but I do love me a crouton. Ah, it's just stale bread, like man. Some stale bread. Just, no, not if it's done properly. It's not stale bread. It can be made as croutons, and then it's not really stale bread. It's croutons. Oh, you know what? They've tuned in today to find out how you're getting. We're getting to the end of our of our time together, folks. Nope. Jeffrey's gonna reveal. Boom, boom. Hold on. Let's get to doom, doom, doom. Nope. Oh, wait. I, do I have my sound effects on, on silent? One second. I got it on mute. Here we go. <laughs> Where are we at? I'm waiting. Oh, that. <laughs> so if you. <laughs> well, while oh, Jeffrey's busy uh, being Richard Noggin, just give us a minute. Let's give him a moment. Uh, so if you saw the intro for today, I like to take the first minute or so and make intros out of them. <laughs> and, and Jeffrey gets sore at me, as they would say. He's sore. No, like, it, you, you, were mean, you, you were mean it's... to me because I... <laughs> he's like, but he did say, you know, I was a professional dancer and, uh, and I was like, okay. But he said he was in a music video when he was 12 years old. Yeah, so, 12, uh, well, give us the initials of the artist. Anything? Any kind of clue? They can put it in the comments. Yeah. Female artist starts with the letter P. That's all I'll give you. Oh, straight up now, tell me, do you really want to love me forever? No, uh, no, uh, I don't. Uh, Paul Abdul? No? I just, I'm just giving a hint. That's all I'm giving. Someone's going to have to track it down. How can we... T- you're not going to be like in the featured people in the video. There's You didn't make the credits. <laughs> oh, we got to work backwards. So this is... Guys, this is going to be 19... Jeff's older than me. <laughs> Let's see. 12. Yeah, I think I was like 12. 12 you were 12 maybe. in the 80s? 12 or 13, maybe. Give us a year. You got to narrow down a year. No. Why are we on this topic anyway? Shouldn't we be talking about something real estate related? No, this is a fun fact. It, and, I, and I said this, I've said this in multiple podcasts, and people have mentioned this to me, that when you reveal, you know, personal things about your history, 
you are building rapport. You're endearing yourself to to the audience where they're like, you know what? Absolutely. Jeff told me he dropped out of school and he went and he got his degree and now he's Dr. Jeffrey Scott Stanton. Damn it, I have so much respect for him because before that I thought he was a bougie little, you know, <laughs> indubitably. <laughs> this is your own opinion. What are you talking no, about? Someone uh, didn't say this. Dude, no, this uh, is uh, your uh, own uh, opinion. Uh, 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 Who I said it? You. I'm, I said, no snitch, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's, um, no no I was, snitch. It's, it's, and I'll say it all the time. It's like what's most personal is most universal. So when you share something personal, it's really universal to everybody. And that's what's called universal experiences. Things like, you know, driving your first car, going out on your first date, buying your first house, you know, renting your first apartment, all things people can relate to. Not a lot of people can relate to that you're in a music video. So we're leaving that one out. Goals are like slippery chicken. Goals uh, are like slippery chicken. Should um, I elaborate? Instagram? Yeah, please do. Okay, great story. This is a great story. Stop me if you heard it. Now you can't stop me because I'm the one to control the microphone. But I went, there was a day, and I was like, man, I was looking forward to this Chick-fil-A. You guys have Chick-fil-A where you live? Of course you Chick-fil-A. do, right? In my area, they camped out. Just like every, They have the best uh, promo to market of any company I've ever seen where they like yeah, they announce be it. You lines. Got, there'll be <clears throat> lines because they give away like three people get free Chick-fil-A for a week, which is like you get one meal per week for 50. What's it cost them? 200 bucks, maybe Nothing. cost of goods, hundred bucks per person, but they have all these people camped out. Anyways, I have a day. I'm like today I'm deserving of a grilled chicken, Chick-fil-A sandwich with the waffle fries and the special sauce that I like. Oh, right. Fries. Right. Those waffles. They're so good. Fries. So good. So I, I, I have my day. See, I it's want my... French fries. Let's just I hear my story. Fries. So I, I, I'm, 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 I'm waiting in line. I, I get it, and they're all about service. Service is spectacular, right? But they don't put the freaking sauce on on your sandwich. They don't put it on. You get special sauce. You got. I'm like, what am I? I gotta put my own sauce on my sandwich if I wanted to do that. Who's made bougie my... now? Yeah, who's exactly. bougie now? I'm like, where's what, the I have sauce? To put my own person? Sauce on my sandwich. Call Come me over bougie, here, please. Okay, so I'm at the line. Indubitably. Indubitably, I'm at the light, and I got my sandwich in my lap like any good human being would do, and I, and I'm I'm putting the sauce on my, and then the guy behind me freaking honks the horn because the light turns green, right? First of all, you shouldn't have been saucing saucing your sandwich while you're driving. At the light even at the light, saucing at the light is fine. And so then I'm like, oh, so I sit there for another ten Can't. seconds because I'm that kind of guy. Like, don't beep at me. I'm gonna freaking wait a couple minutes here, and then I go. But as I go, wait, I turn. Wait a couple of minutes at the light. I waited, okay, I waited 15 seconds because he beeped at me. It's my way of saying, I'm going to wait now, okay, buddy? Just to make you late for whatever important meeting you had. But I turned the corner sharply. What do you think happens? The chicken goes flying. The chicken slides off the bread, Jeff. The chicken slides off the bread. Okay, go slides off the bread, and it goes to that, to that nether region that, that you, can't, you can't even get it. See, it's between the console and my seat. Oh, that's the worst uh, spot. Dude, and, and all I have is this this man-made tool here that I go like this. <laughs> I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get it. Chicken slips back down. Chicken slips back down. Chicken slips. Finally, I'm like, I pull over. I get out of the car. I reach <laughs> under my seat. I grab, the gr- I grab the grilled chicken. What do you think I did? You ate it, didn't you? I ate the damn chicken <laughs> sandwich, man. <laughs> You know why? Because goals are like slippery chicken, man. I wanted to eat that chicken so bad. And even though it wasn't the same chicken that I set out to to eat early that morning or even when I got it from Chick-fil-A, I was that committed to my goals that it didn't matter. I was going to eat that chicken. So goals are like slippery chicken. You know, you could just throw back. You know, you could. No, no one's ever had that experience before. Everybody has dropped something in the console between yes, their seat absolutely. and their thing. You know exactly. What I'm talking Jamin, about. do you do you know you could have just went back through the drive-through and got another chicken? I'm sorry. Have you seen the lines in the drive-through? Ain't nobody got time for that. True. And I grew up with an older brother who, you know, he used to make me eat sand at the beach, quite literally. Um, and he'd say, "God made dirt, so dirt don't hurt." <laughs> So that, that stuck with me, man. Crunchy, crunchy chicken sandwich has a little flavor. Brand new flavor in your ear. Craig oh Mack, 1,000 degrees. 
I get it all the old school <laughs> numbers, man. No, I'm still laughing at this slippery chicken. Yeah. Um, that's going to be my latest t-shirt. I'm going to have like a chicken and say goals or like slippery chicken. Oh, look at my new belt buckle. Is that a water buffalo? It's a buffalo. It's an authentic Montana belt buckle, folks. That's right. J-Man's got a buffalo belt buckle. Next time you see me in Montana, I'm going to be doing a rodeo or something fun. Dang tootin'. Sometimes I just don't understand you. I really, I really, really don't. I'm a chameleon. I can go to Montana, be a, 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 a rodeo cowboy. I can go to the city and... Uh, no, I, I, no, I, I totally, just, I get that. Listen, I get that. I'm very similar that way, too. I just, like... You would not... Why that uh, You would not make it in the rodeo. Why? Because I'm a Buffalo Bills fan. Oh, so that makes perfect sense. What do you mean I would not make it in the rodeo? You, okay, two guys walk into a bar. Mm -hmm. I can blend. They're going to go, that guy is from New York City. You would no, think, bro, hold on, on a second man. here. Watch. Hold on a second here. We're going to test this one of these days. I can. I am chameleon. I understand that you are an NLP expert. I can I blend it. in anywhere. Like, it doesn't make a difference. I am go with the hold flow. On. Jeffrey, we went to a, a networking event in Atlanta and every single mm -hmm. person knew you were from New York. Yeah, because that's intentional. I didn't go there with the intention of blending in. I wear the intention of standing out. So I practice come over. my non-dictional oh, grammar. From here. <clears throat> so I actually went there with the intention of standing out. Therefore, people came over and they said, oh, you guys aren't from around here, are you? Didn't they? Here we didn't here they we people, go. First because of all, they knew. Blending. I wasn't trying to blend. We're, we're I was trying gonna to have stand to out. Clear the place out with two New Yorkers versus jo all the Listen, Georgians. This is the thing. If you want to be the wallflower standing on the wall blending in, that's fine. I'll be the center of attention every time. It's great. Wait, is this coming from the guy who is not dancing? The wallflower. Not dancing. The wallflower. Well, I'm just saying, did you want to blend in? Just to dance. There's certain times to blend Wait, in, and there's certain times to stand out. Your head. Oh, oh, man. oh. There's certain oh. times to blend in and there's certain <laughs> times to stand out. Let's let's yeah. let's pull the audience. Let's pull the audience. Facebook, Instagram. Would you rather be known as a person who blends in or rather be known as the person who stands out? That's I'm my question. I'm not a blender. You're asking the wrong person. I'm not, I'm not you saying you should blend. You were just saying that you could blend in. I could, which it, which involves building rapport with people, so not being I blend an outsider. In. I just choose You're not talking about to blend a guy in. Okay. Okay. I think I, I think I just posted something today on the Instagram. If you're on the Instagram, go check out my most recent post. It says, let me see what it says. Something about not fitting in. I am fine not fitting in or something along those lines. Yeah, I don't care about fitting in. I don't care at all. Have you ever shaved your beard? Yeah, I didn't have a beard for a long time. And a lot of times I just shave it really, really close. But usually when it's colder out, I leave it longer. I don't think I've ever known you uh, to be kind yes, of shaved. Yes, when, when we first met, I did not have a, I did not have a, a facial. I did not have facial hair. Hmm. That must have been why I thought you were so bougie or something. Or something. But the, <laughs> I'm bougie. You're at the office now, right? Because I don't I haven't heard your squeaky chair today. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> I just didn't move around a lot today. I do have to order another chair. I'm just, I'm just, just, it's not like on top of my priority. It really isn't. Blender. <laughs> blender. blender. Somebody said blender. Connect with others different than blending in. Aisha said connecting with others. Yeah. See, uh, Aisha thought you were bu uh, bougie. She said that last week, I bougie? think. Don't, don't take it personal. Just somebody. I don't take it personal at all. Listen, try I'll tip say this all the time. This, this is the motto. try tip steaks, folks. This is the, for those who know what tri-tip is, it's not bougie. This is my motto in life, and I've lived life like this probably for the past 20 years. It's none of my business what you think about me. That's how I live my life. Because honestly, there's way more important people in my life that their opinion matters to me, and I've always lived my life that way, at least, at least for the last 20 years, if not 25 years. It's how you look. It's none of my business what you think about me. If you think I'm bougie, eh, great. If you don't think I'm bougie, eh, 
great. I don't care. Makes no difference to me whatsoever. Makes no difference. Zero. Zilch. Nada. Okay. Well, then uh, maybe you should do some dancing in the intro. Or the outro. <laughs> Because that's what makes me bougie is dancing in the intro or dancing in the outro. I'm actually in a very small space. So this is how far back I can go, just, just you know, in my thing. That's how oh. far back I can go. Oh, my gosh. No excuses, like just like... results, my friend. You're right. I agree with you. So we're getting Let's no results. <laughs> no, that's not it. Do we have Scott anything James else? Dance, dance, dance. Billy and Bean Town, how are you? Billy and Bean Town. Yeah, Billy I don't even know what we talked uh, about karaoke this week. and dances. <laughs> That's funny. I, I, what did we, I didn't even know what we talked about this week. This whole entire, this, this, this much to say about nothing was a big blur to me today. I don't, don't Today, we, I thought about. it was good. We talked about... Uh, I didn't say it wasn't good. I just said I don't talked about it. Well, then I got to write up the description after the fact. Because all this, now that we've reached the, you know, 16th episode, I think, now this is all no. going to get podcasted. Listen, I'm going on here. It says M-T-S-A-N-9. That's that what was it says in the, my little... That's just uh, the link this, I this gave you. This is nine you. to me. This is I nine. shared the old link. Just copy-paste. Oh, okay. Let's see. No, I don't like that one. It's just the normal one. Yeah, that's the normal one. Or summer night. Oh, that's me. That's me. That's me. Go. Hold on. Did you stop that? Is that you? That was you. <laughs> I, I was like, Did you think? <laughs> I thought I stopped it. I played it, then I was like, why isn't it stopping? This is so weird. Do we both have the same game show music? Uh, no, this I really is that seventies seat. game show music. Hold on. Right. That reminds me of like Pulp Fiction. Oh. It's seventies game show music. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna go turn off this so we can have the music. I, I Do we have anything else good. before we go? Because this was a show about nothing today, but there was a lot of value, in my yeah, opinion. I don't think I don't think I have anything else. If Listen, you're going to be in uh, Minneapolis, nothing. I'll be there at the end of the month. I'll be in Philly oh, sometime Billy just, year. Billy and B-Town just said we talked about nothing. Do you know one of the greatest shows of all time was a show about a show nothing. about nothing. Yeah, boy. It's called Seinfeld. Oh, you know what I was... Yep. Th one, one way that you know somebody's not from New York... Mm -hmm. They're going to Long Island or they're going to be in New York City. No, 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 hold on. I'll be staying. You're in the city. You go on the island. In the, he did a whole yes. bit about it, right? You're in the city. You're mm -hmm. on the island, which is so, so strange. But I never thought about it until I heard that bit. But It, it is true because someone asked me, uh, one of our agents from California is in New York City. So I said, he's like, oh, you're at the office. I said, no, I'm not in the city this week. But when I go to Long Island, hey, I'm going out on Long Island. It, you're absolutely right, 100%. Yeah. Well, I'll, be right. I'll be on the island. I'll be on the island, this state to this state. On the island. You're never on the city. I'll be on the city. Yeah. <laughs> this sounds so weird. And this is the thing. We're the only ones who actually call, like, to, to me, and, I, and I've traveled around all over the place, when I say the city, I don't think of any other place besides New York. Like if you're in San Francisco, if you're in California, you're going to San Francisco, you say, I'm going to San Francisco. If you're in Atlanta and you're going to downtown Atlanta, you say, I'm going downtown. Very few places they say, I'm going to the city. Like even in Chicago, and I don't know, people in Chicago say, I'm going to the city. No, they don't. They don't. It's one of those, it's one of those things in New York where we're so it's pompous that city. it's the city. That's all yeah. it needs is the city. And, and that's how like when I'm talking to somebody, I'm, I'm going to be in the city, you know, in the next week or so. Oh, okay. Then I know I know if they're the people, if they're from there. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks for the cell phone tips. What's cell phone tips? Cell phone tips. <laughs> <I'm bleeding lottery. laughs> what are you saying? You're welcome. Uh, what well, here I did I did solve something though. Uh if and this is an iPhone versus Samsung, because I'm I'm a new uh cell phone person or new iPhone person. When I'm when I'm on Instagram 
or when I'm doing something video related, it's a mode. I can choose portrait video mode, which blurs my background, and then also choose a different microphone mode. Yo, we got Chirac shots in the building. Oh. Bah, bah, bah. Look at that. All right, let's, that. let's hit the music. I'm going to turn off my, my Bluetooth. Hold up. I got to turn off my earpiece. Bluetooth? Is that like blueberry? Yo, the one AirPod is like when you had one leg up with jogging pants. You know what I'm saying? That's how you know your hood. One AirPod. Oh. Here we go, folks. You remember that drawing? Gonna make it happen. Joe is here and Jeffrey keeps rapping, but he doesn't know what he's talking it's about because Jay Man's here is gonna scream and shout. I can freestyle all day like you know that I can. Jeffrey's up. Let him take a stand. Silent as, as usual, I knew he'd be just some rapping. I can't. Old I can't hear you. You're coming. You're very. You're coming very muffled. By the way, all of a sudden. Muffled. Do you remember that? Do you remember driving like this? How far back could you get the seat? If only my eyes showed over the door. Like only my eyes showed over the side door. That, that was probably back far enough to the top of the seat. Somebody was in the car driving. All right, folks. Where'd you get well, this from? Um, this is Jeremiah's J Man Monero. I'm Jeffrey Scott Stanton. And this was much to say about nothing, a.k.a. Indubitably Podcast. Have a great day. See everybody in the next one. We're still over here. Okay, now.